TikTok's such a weird place. I'm sure most of you have seen the trend that's existed since the inception of the platform where thirsty teenagers make those videos like, I would be a bad boyfriend because I'd love you too much, or you shouldn't date me because I just love you too much. You'd be suffocated with my overwhelming love. You know, shit like that. It's super weird. It's like romance to them is like it is an anime. It's just super goofy. But today someone sent me a link to a guy, an Adonis, really. And I took one look at this man and I said, yeah, this guy. F and then it turns out he doesn't. A lot of his videos are just about relationships and why he's not in one and, and why he would be a shitty boyfriend. And it's the cliche thing I mentioned where he's like, I just, I, I, I'm too much of a lover. My love is too powerful for mere mortals to understand and tolerate. I would literally murder someone with love. I would their butthole with love and you're not ready for it. Thus, I have to be single. Everybody wants to know why I'm single and... These are some reasons why. If I was your boyfriend, I would be very overprotective. Like, no one's talking to you but me. I would want to hang out all the time. Like, I want to be with you. I would FaceTime you and text you constantly, and then you would probably end up getting annoyed. Bro, I'm not even dating you and I'm ready to break up. He's just actually listing off red flags and giving legitimate reasons why he would suck to be in a relationship with. It's supposed to be one of those cutesy videos where girls are supposed to have their heart melt like, oh, he's single because he's so caring. But his just comes across as, wow, I can totally see why he's single with this kind of shit. It almost just sounds like threats, like, hey, if we're dating, you're not talking to anyone but me. Your parents? Nope, we're cutting them out. Your imaginary friend? I'm gonna go in there and murder him. You are only gonna communicate with me. Thus, I have to lock you in the basement to make sure that you don't betray me and talk to somebody that's not me. I want everyone to know, like, I want all my friends, all your friends, my family, your family, I want everyone to know that we're together. So those are some reasons why I'm single. You know, to be honest, I actually can't believe that he's single. These aren't the worst qualities in the world. Yeah, you know, maybe it's a bit clingy, but it could be worse. He could be addicted to ketamine. Maybe he is, but he didn't mention it here. And if this is all that's wrong with him here, hey, maybe it's worth the chance. A message for all ladies. All right, ladies, listen. Any guy you date should see you as a priority, not an afterthought. If a guy can only text you how he feels, he doesn't feel anything. If a guy's not willing to show you off, you can show him the door. If all they want to do is play Fortnite, you tell them good night. Actually, pretty good advice here, I have to admit. If your man just wants to play Fortnite, you just tell him night night, and then you go and turn yourself into the police because you were dating a child, you sick. I'm wet. Panties are sodden. God damn it, he's the perfect man. Jesus Christ. You'll notice that there's like a striking similarity between the things that would make him a good boyfriend and the things that also make him a bad boyfriend. It's basically just the same thing. He's obsessive. Like, he, he, want, he, he will literally always be there. Like the boogeyman under your bed, making sure that you're sleeping soundly. If you date me, I'm slapping that phone out of your hand, trying to talk to somebody that's not me, you naughty harpy. What do you think you're doing? I'm always there to hype you up. You want to do something? You do it and I'll be there to cheer you on. As long as it's just me there cheering you on. Reasons why I'm a bad boyfriend. I always want kisses and hugs. Like, even if it's random, no matter what time, I always want them. I always want to give you anything and everything. Like, even if I don't have it, I just want to give it to you. I don't want you to pay for anything. Even if I don't have enough money, I want to spoil you. Dinners, movie, anything, I want to pay for it. I won't let you. I want to show you off. I'm going to post about you. Even if you don't want me to do it, I, I can't help it. I want to show you off, baby. I will always put you before me. Even if you're having a great day and I'm not, I will just hype your day up. And I won't tell you about how bad my day was. But those are some reasons why I'm a bad boyfriend. Oh my god, it's so dreamy. You don't want me to post about you? That's too bad. I'm putting your nudes on Twitter because I'm so proud of you, baby. You got a great body. Those ass cheeks and the way that they can clap oh my god the world needs to know i'm gonna show you off baby i feel bad singling this guy out because like i said it's so common so many people on tiktok do this exact same shit like i'm such a bad boy i would take you to a drive through and i wouldn't let you pay for your meal because i'm bad i'd be a bad boyfriend but the reason i chose him is because he has whole compilations dedicated to these videos because he's done so many of them and it just made it easy to have like a nice 
cum dumpster full of these bad versus good boyfriend things. So anyway, I just wanted to briefly touch on this because I think it's super weird. I know it's not like uncommon for people to be like, I'm actually super shitty in being in relationships because I'm just too goddamn nice. Nice guys don't win, am I right, girls? Yeah, I see a lot of that shit, and then this is kind of the same thing. Like, I'm a bad boyfriend because I just want to love a girl, and girls don't want to be loved. They want an asshole douchebag, so I'd be a bad boyfriend. I see it all over the place, and this guy, he's just done it so many times, I figured it'd be a good example to talk about the trend and, and go into detail on it. Yeah, so that's really about it. So yeah. Hey, how are you? Are you having a good day? I hope so. And I hope you won't be mad at me if I try and change that real quick. I want to put a very yucky TikTok creep on your radar, and it's someone I'm sure some of you have heard of over the last year or so. He's become a bit of an infamous boogeyman that a lot of people have talked about. Most notably, Oompaville made a whole, whole video on him, kind of breaking down all of the awful degenerate shit he's done. He was actually quite popular, he had over a million followers on there. His initial account was called Snapshot Eye. He then had to make other ones in lieu of a lot of allegations that came out and a lot of information that went public. His real name is Paul Breach, which is fitting because he keeps breaching the restraining order parents have against them to protect the safety of their children online. I'm only kidding about that. I don't, I don't know if there's any actual restraining orders against him. Even if there were, it would mean nothing to him. You can't teach the breach. He's going to continue to flirt and act inappropriately with underage kids on TikTok. It's all he knows, damn it. So... Paul Breach is an alleged predator, but a confirmed creep. And I'm not here to just go over all of the allegations. There's quite a few videos that cover them extraordinarily well. The reason I'm talking about him is he's blowing up yet again thanks to a clip of his that just went viral. This is during one of his nightmarish TikTok lives. Oh, there's a plane crashed in Tanzania. Oh, into the lake. So he gets this tragic news and immediately goes right back into lip syncing and shit. Now keep in mind, this man is in his 40s. Now I'm sure you didn't need me to tell you that, you can look at him and immediately deduce this isn't exactly a teenage boy here doing this cringe ass lip sync shit. Terrorists have infiltrated a local Burger King. Oh jeez. And they're slitting the throat of the hostages. Jinkies. Hey, prayers to the families. And I'm sure after just seeing this, you're probably not surprised to learn that he's got a very foul past. So, he's no spring chicken. He's in his 40s here, and he constantly engages inappropriately with young girls in his audience. And it's something he's come under heavy scrutiny for for a long time. He's actually somewhat of a pseudo-celebrity in the UK, where people sometimes have gone out of their way to find him and make fun of him directly to his face. Sometimes there's even like in the wild spottings like Bigfoot where they'll start filming him and then go up and start insulting him. And it's become something of a beloved pastime over the last year. It died down once he kind of fell off. But now that this clip is blowing up again, I've seen that his channel on TikTok, at least the one I believe is still his, is getting quite a bit more traction from it. Even though this isn't necessarily the newest clip, it is a very silly and surprising one that a lot of people have had their curiosity piqued by, so went out of their way to find more from him. Thus, Paul Breach, the cockroach, continues to somewhat thrive. His whole shtick is posting thirst traps, even though if you're thirsty, this isn't going to quench it. What he's doing is just going to be putting sand in your mouth and making it worse, like giving you the cinnamon challenge. What he posts is the opposite of a thirst trap. It is alarming. He is way too old to be doing this garbage. And I don't mean to be mean and rude, but he's not exactly a 10 out of 10 looking gentleman here. It's also worth mentioning this kind of thing isn't uncommon for his streams, though it is probably his most preposterous moment ever recorded. To go from horrible news right back into his god-awful thirst trapping. Oh, bless you, love. Bless you. Love. I just wanted to show you another clip of how unhinged his TikTok lives are. So sometimes he'll just play sound effects to give the impression that there's other people around him. Always women. This one... I don't even understand what the thought process was. I think he sat on a whoopee cushion to make a fart noise as if it was like a girl over there farting. And he's like, oh, goodness. Hey, hey, now. Hey, now. That butthole's not meant to be usable. It's just supposed to be aesthetic for me. Girls shouldn't be farting. Despicable. 
And then he plays a very clearly stock sneeze sound effect and then goes even further, love. And then like, it's like angry about it, it seems. Fuck you know, Jacob. <laughs> Oh, yeah. so much. That is a fucking impression of me, love. How you do that? It's actually one of the saddest goddamn things imaginable. To be so lonely that you have to fake interaction around you on a TikTok live stream where people go there mainly to make fun of you because by this point he had already become kind of like a TikTok spittoon for people to stop in and spit a loogie into. But, like I mentioned, unfortunately there were a few young fans that would reach out to him and he would always reciprocate being flirtatious. He even got called out on this pretty often, way before like he had to take his account down. I think he got banned. I don't think he took it down. But there were always people taking notice of like, Paul, why do you always just reply to like these really young girls? Why do you only talk to girls in the comments? Because it's only the girls that are commenting. And if it's a comment from a guy, I say hi. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because I'm dating them all and we're having babies. Only to the ones I'm married to, which is all of them. Who could have imagined that the 40-something-year-old man making thirst traps aimed at children would turn out to be a real weirdo. I, I can't believe it. It's always the ones you least expect, am I right? I'd also like to show you <laughs> another one of his clips that's somewhat blowing up right now. This is apparently one that he sent directly to a fan, and it is so uncomfortable to watch. Laney, smile. That is an order. And then jump in a cold bath. Get yourself smiling, get yourself happy. I've been a moody little... Yeah, for a little while, and that is just stupid on my behalf um so i apologize if anything i've ever done has um brought you in low mood um i know i was at the start of the week and um i've taken steps to fix that uh but you need to smile you need to be happy you've got a beautiful smile please please use it perhaps um his brain just blue screens there for a moment. Windows had to have a hard reset there. He had his own little Mitch McConnell moment during this message that he sent to one of his fans. It's always nice to get a message from you, sweet. And it's always lovely to see that smile. What an uplifting video. I know you're sad, but have you tried not being sad and just smiling? Because I'm ordering you to. In fact, you don't have a choice. Smile. And you will feel better, because it'll make me feel better. And you should be happy when I'm happy. Damn it. I don't know, everything about this guy is really weird. So, since he has blown up recently, I just wanted to at least make people aware of who he is and his past. Because he's not exactly just some, like, goofy guy. He's, a, he's an unhinged, weird guy with a lot of serious accusations against them. And I've only just begun to scratch the surface of how awful a lot of the things he's uh, being accused of are. And a lot of them he's never denied or anything at all, really. He just buries his head and pushes forward doing more lip-syncing and bad dancing. And people have confronted him directly, and he still never really denies any of it. It's hard to explain, and the whole point of this video was just to let you all know, Paul Breach sucks. That's about it. See ya. There are more podcasts on YouTube than there are stars in the night sky. Everyone has been convinced that they're a unique, special little butterfly and that their insight is invaluable. And now that there's so much easy access to recording equipment, everyone gets this insidious little idea planted deep in their noodle that it's time to start a podcast. And my god, I tell you, it's, it's, a, it's a plague. It's a disease, a virus that's infecting the mind of the most insecure and insufferable people of all time. For some reason, once that AT2020 touches their hand, they just scream their insecurity from the mountaintop with authority, proudly. And it blows my mind. But I've never seen insecurity projected quite like what I'm about to show you today. So, I am still shocked that he hasn't scrubbed this podcast episode from the entire cyberspace, just wiped it from the internet. Like, if, if this was a clip of mine, 
I would have paid every penny I have to my name in order to ensure this never sees the light of day again, that this clip stays buried, like the Millennium Puzzle from Yu-Gi-Oh. It is that <laughs> embarrassing. Like, you, you couldn't lock me up in Guantanamo Bay and torture this clip out of me, and yet he still has it on his channel. So the podcast is like a bootleg fresh and fit where they just get a bunch of women together and ask them stupid questions and then rate each other's beauty. And then he gets really offended. Like, visibly upset, and I really thought he was going to start bawling his eyes out, crying in the fetal position. And I've watched a couple of their episodes now, because I was curious if this was like an isolated thing. But no, this is pretty common. This is like a staple in their show, from what I can tell, where they just have this section where they ask the women that they bring on to rate their beauty. The, the rate the podcast host's beauty. Listen, ladies, we're rating just off physical appearance, just off beauty, okay? Same standards. We, trust me, we're not going to get hurt, okay? That's the biggest lie ever told since the time Kellogg's tried to convince the world that sugar doesn't make you fat. So, the segment is Rate Our Appearance, basically, which is some actual middle school, literal baby brain man-child behavior shit. That is insecurity at its finest. To have the women you bring on as guests rate your appearance. That's so stupid. I'm surprised they don't also play Spin the Bottle and Truth or Dare. And maybe they do. I've only watched a couple of their episodes, but... He says that they're not going to get offended with the ratings. Well, do I have news for you? All right, oh, cool. Stop being delusional. What the f All right, so now what I want you to do is, ladies, real quick, don't waste my time. Rate the guys. Do me a favor, Josh. Stand up real quick, man. Everybody look at him once, man. He's not going to stand up again, all right? So I want you to rate me, my co-host, and then our producer. Go from 1 to 10. Just off beauty. Go. When he does these sections, it really seems like he's some kind of basketball coach who's really upset at the team. Like, he gets very aggressive with all of it. Like, don't waste my time. Listen, we're going to do the drill right now. We're going to do it right. So stand up, Josh. Look at him. Now spin around, Josh. Okay, good. Drop your pants, Josh. Good. Now rate everything you just saw. Now, don't waste my time. Like, I don't know why he gets, like, so upset even before they hear ratings. Like, he immediately goes into these sections combative. For, like, I, and I watched the whole episode up until this point. Like, he's pretty blunt and, like, like very much so most of the time. But when it gets to this one in particular, he's, like, angry. Like, even before anything happens, he's already angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak into the phone. I would rate you... First you're rating me, and then him, and okay. then him. Go. Um, I'll rate you a seven. All right, what is he? I'll rate you an eight, right. and I'll rate Josh an eight also. Okay, what about you? Go. Uh, I would rate you a eight. Okay. Nine. Okay. Oh, come on, he just stood up, bro. Like, come on. I don't even know what he's getting upset with here. She only took like an extra two seconds to take another look at the guy. It's like he just lost a gold split in a speed run to this extra two second time loss. Like, it's not that big of a deal. I don't know why he's so on edge. It seems like he just really hates the guests that they bring on. Because when he's talking to his boys, he's like much more jovial and joking and smiley. But the second the conversation shifts to the rest of the class here, like the group of women over there, he turns into like a drill sergeant and starts getting extremely serious and, and loud. So I don't know why they even bring on women to this podcast when they don't even really want them there. And I also don't not know why women keep agreeing to go on shows like these, because half the time it's them just like saying, you're not good looking and shit like that. Like right after this rating section of rating the podcast hosts, the podcast hosts go through and rate all the women and they literally give them twos, threes and fours and make sure that they know that the hosts don't find them attractive. So I don't really get why women keep signing up for this shit just to get insulted by podcast hosts and they don't say anything or do anything. Like, the women will insult each other sometimes. Like, they don't ever push back against the hosts at all, so then they just walk away looking silly from all of it. Like, all of it is just a net loss for the women that go on these shows. I don't know why they keep doing it. Mm, I would say nine. All right. What about you over there? Go. Two. Okay. <laughs> I would give him a nine. Okay. What is what is he over there? I would give him a ten because okay. he invited me. <laughs> All right. So, again, you sound like a stupid-ass bitch. I'm trying Thank to figure you. out why you rated me a two because we're not we're not going off our interactions. We're going off beauty. I don't right? like likes. I don't give a f He's light-skinned just like me, and you just gave him a nine. You gave me a two. You only gave me a two because of the whole interaction that we've been having, right? So do me a favor. Get the f up and get the f out. Thank you. Yeah, get out. Spoken like a man whose feelings weren't hurt at all and wasn't offended by the two rating. 
So he tries to justify it with, you only rated me a 2 because we had a disagreement earlier, which I guess they did. But even still, this is an extreme overreaction to getting rated a 2. The insecurity is palpable. You can taste the salt here. So what the f Stupid ass bitch. Make sure she gets her bag and phone too. Make sure she doesn't take the wrong phone, dummy. All right, cool. So now, again. You can actually hear that lump in his throat start to form from all the emotion building up inside of him. Get out of here, stupid bitch. Hey, make sure she grabs the right phone and, and not someone else's phone because she's so dumb. She probably won't know which one's her phone. Dumb idiot. She's real stupid. You're stupid. I'm a two. No, you're a two. Unsurprisingly, this turned their own community against them for the episode. A lot of the chat messages pop up on screen, so you're just seeing things popping up saying like, damn, just because she gave you a two? What the f***? Or something like this where it's like, thought you wanted your show to last. Like, like come on, man. It's it's because it's ridiculous. It's very clear temper tantrum over getting a two. If you were someone that was actually getting, if you were really slamming ham and glazing donuts, you wouldn't care if one girl didn't find you attractive or rejected you. You wouldn't care. You would laugh it off like a normal person. So one girl gives you a two and it shatters your whole ego and you publicly melt down about it? That's such a bad and embarrassing look. And he tries to justify it, like I said, by saying, eh, she only gave me that two because of our negative interaction from moments ago. Just pure huffing of copium. We're just going off physical beauty, okay? Not what we've been talking about, not my arguments, not on none of that, okay? I want you to rate me, him, and then him. Go. Mm. Can you stand up for a second? Uh, you didn't see me before the show? Yeah, but I just forgot. I mean, I'm... Just I... stand. It's not that hard. <laughs> okay. On, You're an eight. God damn it, bro. Go ahead, rate him. Podcast has now turned into like a hostage situation here. All the women seem on edge, and I actually just can't believe they didn't leave after that. Like, again, I don't understand why women keep signing up for this shit. Like, they, no one seems to be having any fun there. The hosts especially don't seem to be having any fun. This guy's co-host seems miserable, but he does liven up it a little bit when he gets to rate the other women and gives them, like, threes, fours, and, and fives and all that. But it's just so awkward and weird. The only explanation that I can come up with, the only rational way of explaining this, is that the reason women are signing up for this show or shows like it is because they're being paid for their time, so it's like an hourly wage just to go there and be insulted or bouncing stupid questions off of. That's the only thing that almost makes sense. Like, so they just come on here to play a game of grade my friend's appearance for two and a half hours or whatever. I mean, really, someone summed up the situation really nicely in the comments. They said, podcast is called unfiltered, yet kicks a girl out for her opinion. And that is just such a nice, concise way of breaking it down and the silliness of all of it. Again, I watched a couple episodes just to try and get like an understanding of the content. It just, there's nothing there. Everyone seems miserable most of the time or they bounce the dumbest questions around. And they always just do a grade our appearance thing, which who wants to listen or watch that? Like I, as a viewer, let's say that I was a huge fan of this podcast. Why would I want to keep seeing what women say about my podcast hosts? Like, why would I care? There's nothing there. There's no entertainment there. Especially when one of them's super insecure about all of it, who's going to freak out if he doesn't get a nine. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So yeah, just wanted to talk about it a little bit. That's it. See ya. It's sad that society has been brainwashed into thinking that going to an Ivy League school is the ultimate goal for achievements. It'll set you up for success in life, when really, I think it's a bunch of hooey. Where you should be striving to attend is the prestigious institute known as Riz Academy. Excuse me. Have you seen my girlfriend? She looks like this. Oh. <laughs> just kidding. What you just saw right there is a woman's heart melting as our headmaster at Riz Academy does some brilliant infield work. Enrollment at Riz Academy can help you find success like this, and who doesn't want that? So, I saw Cody Co watch a couple of videos from this and I'd never heard of Riz Academy. Most of you know I'm a huge fan of absolutely awful pickup artistry as it's called and this is among some of the worst I've seen. The entire TikTok account is just like this. This woman looks like she's fearing for her life when the guy comes up to her. Almost every single video plays out like this. The women are either extremely uncomfortable or downright frightened. He's like a Dementor. He comes up to them and just sucks the soul out of them by trying these pickup lines. Excuse me, are you a typewriter? Hmm? Are you a typewriter? No. Because you're just my type. Excuse me, are you a typewriter? 
No. Because you're just my type. <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> He's just this miasma of cringe. This plague of awkwardness that swoops in. His line doesn't even make any sense. Are you a typewriter because you're just my type? Like, what in the hell? Like, the word type is in the name, sure, but it has nothing to do with being a typewriter or anything to do with that at all. That makes no sense. That's like me saying, hey, lady, are you a keyboard? Because you're the key to my heart. Or, or better yet, hey, excuse me, ma'am, are you a PlayStation? Because I want to take you down to the station and play. It's like, what the f are you talking about? Okay, I'm gonna have to write you a ticket. Who said you can look this good? And the oh, premise is? What's your name? Krista. Do you think I can get your phone number? I have a girlfriend. I have a goldfish. Wee woo, wee woo. Watch out, ladies. Riz patrols out and about. And he almost wrote her a ticket for being too good looking. <laughs> and then, you know, you know how that panned out. Not very well. Uh, also, I have to love his comeback when she mentions that she has a girlfriend. His his checkmating move is, I have a goldfish. Genius. Hey, cutie. Sorry. Hi. Uh, I like your vibe. It's showing, like, adventurous. Do you know what this is? Uh, like it. Yeah, and the only th the only thing it's like it's not working because I don't have your phone number. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you think I can get your phone number? Oh, oh my! There's a lot to break down here. So he he comes at her like it's an ambush, <laughs> like he's part of a sting operation. They're they're busting her. So like she doesn't even register that this was an attempt to like flirt immediately. So he walks up to her like a random encounter in an MMO. Says, hey cutie, and she's just like, oh, sorry, <laughs> thinking that she had gotten his way or something. So she tries to like dodge him, but then he like swoops back around. He's like, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I like your vibe. And his use of props is actually extremely commendable. So he saw him with the clipboard when he was uh, RPing his Riz Patrol. Now he's got like an old rotary phone out, which I, I don't know who told him that this is a good idea to be like using props and shit turning into like a thespian troop with trying to get numbers, but what do I know? This guy's the goddamn headmaster of the Riz Academy. He is the one who knocks. So, you know, he's got his old phone. He tells her, hey, look, it doesn't work because your phone number's not in it. It's going to magically fix it. And you can just see the discomfort wash over her entire being. I just don't even see what the end game here is with this strategy. Like, what the f*** do you expect to happen next? Like, oh, okay, I really want to fix that old phone, so I'll give you my phone number so you can input it into the rotary device and we can get it all squared away. It's like, what the, it's like you can't even play along with this. There is nothing you can do here except be uncomfortable. There is no winning move here. The only winning move is not to play. I think you're really cute and I like your vibe. It's showing, like, adventurous. Do you know what this is? Yeah. It's like an old phone. The only thing it's like it's not working because it doesn't have my your phone number in it. <laughs> Heavens to Betsy, just put the rotary phone away. Stop using it. It's not working. It will never work. Get rid of the rotary phone and get it out of your routine. Excuse me. Do you watch Stranger Things? Mm -hmm. Um, I was about to say it's like it's the strangest thing because I don't have your phone number. <laughs> do, you, do you know what? Do you know what this is? Oh, well, it's, a, it's like an old, old phone. Old yeah, phone. it's my phone. Do you think I can get your phone number? Oh, I don't know. Why are you carrying that around? Is that your strategy? <laughs> get rid of the rotary phone, I'm begging you. Take a sledgehammer to it. Vanquish it. Don't do it again. And I am so tired of the lines he uses. It actually is making me upset from the outside looking in here. Do you watch Stranger Things? Because it's the strangest thing, I don't have your phone number. Stop it. Stop it. These are stinkers. Like, I, I could come up with these forever, and none of them are good. Hey, excuse- <coughs> I almost choked on, on that one, it's so bad. Excuse me, ma'am, have you seen James Bond's license to- Yeah? Well, I've got a license to clap. What's your number? Or, hey, you know my favorite movie's The Mummy? Well, I want to put a baby in you and make you the mommy. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. Even just saying these makes me feel awful. The point is, these are this is a terrible format for your pickup lines here. Excuse me. Do you watch uh, Stranger Things? Yes. 
Because it's the strangest thing that I don't have your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you think? Do you want it for real? Yeah. Okay. 5,000 no's, but it only takes one yes to make it all worth it. Buddy's done it. <laughs> Somehow, the Stranger Things line gets him a number. Probably a fake number, but we'll take whatever small W's we can get out here. That's the Riz Academy difference. Um, you don't need Halloween uh, because you're a treat every day. Aw, thank you. <laughs> Do you think I can get your Instagram? Um, I don't have Instagram. Your phone I... number? Mm, probably not. Okay. I'm sorry. Have a good have one. A great day, though. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Ooh. That was just a, a true combo of despair. An awful pickup line <laughs> into just some brutally honest, no, you can't have my number. Not even bothering to feign an excuse, just, no, probably can't have my number, but have a good day. Excuse me. If I get bit by a spider, do I become... No, I become Spider-Man. If you bite me, can I be your man? Um, that was a good line. <laughs> Stumbling, bumbling, and fumbling through your own Spider-Man pickup line is... is something special. Uh, hats off to her for being such a trooper, telling, her, telling him that it was a, a good line. Because God damn it, it was a beautiful line. I like your backpack. Thank you. Do you like water? Nope. No, you don't like water? This is the perfect finale here for the Riz Academy. He goes up to this girl, compliments her backpack as a way of like easing in there to his pickup line, which is, do you like water? The expected answer is yes, and then he's supposed to say, I mean, you like 70% of me. He has a couple of TikToks where he used that line before to moderate success, I'll, I'll say. But he, he chose this girl here who was clearly not in the mood to play this game at all. So she she immediately just shuts that shit down. Do you like water? Nope. And he and the, and the guy picks up on it. At least he didn't like keep pressing. So he's like, okay, I'll pack it up and leave here. So at the very least, this guy doesn't like keep pushing. He just does his line and then lets the cards fall where they may. So I mean, yeah, that's uh, that's the Riz Academy for you, baby. Uh, look forward to your enrollment. That's about it. See ya. You have been lied to. For your entire life, you've been fed a fib. You've been living in a dimension of dishonesty. And I'm here to be the schoolyard bully who drags you back into reality, kicking, screaming, and coming. Pickup lines don't work. It's like the tooth fairy. They're not real. They're not effective. They're just weird. I know, that's a tough pill to swallow, but I'm giving you the cold shower you need right now. Is confidence important? Absolutely. No one wants to date some sad sack of shit. But, it's not the only thing that matters. Which leads me to what I'd like to show you today. On TikTok, a lot of people have conflated confidence with pickup lines. And there's one man in particular I'd like to show you that I think is the perfect case study for why this is a bad thing. Pickup lines will never work for the majority of people in the world. Unless you are an actual chiseled Greek god, a pickup line is only going to serve to make you look creepy and dry up every vagina within a five mile radius. It's just a cringy, gross thing. Pickup lines only work in YouTube prank videos where it's all rehearsed and fake. But a lot of people don't seem to know that, so a guy on TikTok has been using pickup lines pretty much every day for the last month on strangers out in public hoping to get their numbers or go on dates and he's been rejected at least like a hundred times now on camera it feels like in only a month so he's setting a, a real world record here hey, excuse me hi i got you pop tarts for looking so beautiful <laughs> what's your name i have a boyfriend you do yeah what's your name though um i don't oh okay well yeah. i just wanted to say you're pretty okay thank you you like my pop tart line though thank you it was good my pop tart pickle line it was it good sure yeah i ate pop tart oh, you don't eat pop tart no, I don't. okay have a good day i wasn't even in the shopping center at this time but i honestly felt like i needed a shower just from even seeing the video it's just so uncomfortable you could tell the girl really just was dreading every second of that interaction it only lasted about 35 seconds but i bet it felt like an entire 24 hours worth of misery for her and for him too like, this is a guy that, you know, if nothing else can be said about him, he doesn't stay past the rejection. 
there's a lot of pickup artists that always say, don't take no for an answer, as if they're like some kind of business student at a shitty university who gets the worst advice ever. You know, if you get rejected, you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing until you end up on this offender's registry. At least this guy, every time he gets rejected, he just he throws his hands up. He's like, oh, okay, then I'm done here. And then he says, thanks for your time, and then wishes them a nice day. Honestly, he's just like kind of a trick-or-treater, like, hey, thanks for, uh, you know, the candy. I'm going home now. So that's great, and it shows me he has some level of self-awareness, but it's still some turbo-creepy shit here, because he walks up phone in hand, recording them, and for some reason he always has the light on his phone. It was mentioned in like four of his TikToks, like, hey, are you recording? Why is the light on? And then he just denies it, like, no, no, I'm not recording, just lying about it. But yeah, so he comes up recording them, and then delivers some of the worst lines of all time. He calls this one the Pop-Tart pickup line, but it's not really like a, a classic pickup line. This is rather unorthodox, I suppose. All he did is approach her with a box of Pop-Tarts and said, I got you this for being hot, and then gets rejected. Excuse me. Sorry, this is awkward, but I just had to say you're very pretty. Thank you. Yeah, all right. This was the rejection that started it all for this man. This was patient zero. The first time he went out in public and told a girl she was pretty. Uh, came on pretty aggressive. She said thanks and then walked away. He walked away. You know, that's where that story ends. Not exactly a fairy tale ending. They didn't get married in the end or anything. But for some reason, this started it for him. This was enough to get him interested in continuing to pursue this as his main source of content. Excuse me. Sorry, this is awkward, but you're very pretty. Oh, thank you. What's your name? Oh, um, I'm Jasmine. Jasmine? Yeah. I'm Nigel. Oh, Jasmine, like the flower, huh? Yeah. Well, you do look like a flower. Oh, thank you. I'm just kidding. What, what are you up to? My man panicked right there and hit her with the just kidding. That was the real-time equivalent of the classic, Hey, girl, you're super hot. I want to... And then five minutes later with no response. LOL, sorry. Just kidding. That was my friend. That was on my phone. Not me. I didn't type that. How are you? Like, you, you can't you can't just throw that out there and then immediately backpedal like that. He just bailed instantly. Excuse me. Hey, I was just leaving the store. I had to tell you you look so pretty. What's your name? Sherry. What are you up to, Sherry? Buying a charger. Oh, buying a charger? What did you do? Did you, did you break your charger or what? Losing them. You're losing them? Yeah, what store did you see me in? Are you recording? Oh no, I'm not recording. It's what just a that? lie. It's Ray Bans. He blinks when he sees cute girls. You're funny. I really thought my man was about to run out of this store Looney Tunes style after getting caught red handed recording. That's usually what's the creepiest part about these kind of interactions is they film themselves, like blatantly filming themselves recording the whole interaction. I don't know how they don't get called out more often for it, but it's super weird every time. But yeah, this is one of his more brave ones, just right in the middle of the store as she's trying to check out. You're pretty. Why are you buying a charger? No, I'm not recording. Yes, I have an erection. So what? Excuse me. Hi, um... I'm sorry, I just had to tell you you look so pretty. Oh, thanks. What's your name? Me. Me? What are you up to, me? I like that. What is that? Uh... I don't know. What's it called? Trying to get you tattooed on my arm. I'm just playing. <laughs> How's your day going? Good, Yeah? You don't get approached a lot? You look nervous. Am I making you nervous? <laughs> I did, but I just kept walking. You got scared, huh? <laughs> no. No? This one's pretty rough. I can only imagine how scary it would be to just have some random goofball sprinting up behind you, and you can hear him coming too. He's really fee fi fo fumming his way behind her, shouting, Excuse me, excuse me, and then you turn around and it's a guy recording and says you're pretty. That shit's just gotta be painful. Like dipping your nutsack in like piping hot boiling water. Like, it just can't be an enjoyable experience. And even he recognizes that, where he's like, oh, you, you look nervous. Uh, you know, you were probably scared. Did, was I, did I make you scared? I'm sorry. You know, you were scared and nervous. Like, he can, he, he can even rationalize somewhere deep inside of him, like, yep, this was pretty psychopathic shit. I, I probably did scare her. Excuse me. Um, sorry. This is awkward, but I love your outfit. Oh, thank you. What's your name? I'm actually in a hurry. I'm oh, you're in a hurry? Yeah. Well, can I grab your number real fast, you think? I do have a boyfriend. You do? Oh, you're very pretty by the way. Take it as a compliment, okay? Yeah. yeah. This one was pretty cool because he performed it in front of an audience here. That guy in the back is very well aware of what's going on here, and he's got front row seats to the cringe Super Bowl happening in front of him. And you can see even he's cracking a smile from time to time after how uncomfortable this whole interaction is. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh my god, you're so pretty. Thank you. 
What's your name? Lauren. What are you up to, Lauren? Nothing much. Yeah? What you looking for? Um, clothes. I'm looking for your number. <laughs> I have a boyfriend. You do? Mm -hmm. Alright then. Well, you're pretty, okay? I swear to God, this guy has heard the word boyfriend more than he's ever heard his own name. Every time he walks up to a woman within three or four sentences, he's able to get them to say, I have a boyfriend, or sorry, I have a boyfriend. Like, I don't know how many times you can take that. Just stop. Just stop. Stop using your pickup line. Stop recording yourselves trying to, like, come on to women in a really creepy, aggressive way. Just, just stop it. Excuse me. Hi. Hi. Do you know where the library is? Yeah, if you go all straight, you should uh -huh. see it. So just continue straight across the bridge. Oh my god. The way, to your right. the way you, like, pointed, you're definitely my type. <laughs> I just planned. What's your name? Jocelyn. Jocelyn. What are you up to, Jocelyn? I'm actually really late to class. Oh, you are? Yeah. What, what class you got? Um, nutrition. Nutrition? Oh, I love that class. Okay, have a good day. Okay, thank you. Well, I mean, you know, he tried. There was an attempt there. You know, the the way you just pointed out the library makes you the girl of my dreams. You're definitely my type. Regular old Casanova. I, I have no doubt, shortly after filming, the girl ran back and jumped into his arms. Um, so, where's, which was the library? Sorry, I'm new here. The library? Yeah. Um... Just walk straight like down. It's literally like just walk straight and then it's like that big building right there. Okay, you go here, yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, What's I'm your name? Mine? Yeah. I'm probably going to walk by the library right now. Oh, yeah? Just you want to walk me? Yeah. yeah. Sure. You're attractive. <laughs> Thank you. What's your Unfortunately, in this one, he managed to run into an extremely nice person who was kind enough to invite him to follow her to the library because she thought he needed help getting there. And immediately upon receiving the invitation, he accepts it and gets super weird about it. This will probably be the last time she offers to help a stranger find the library or anything of that nature. It goes on and on and on for like 30, 40 more videos maybe? I don't know, so many. And he's still going to this day. I think his most recent one was only like 4 or 5 days old as of right now me making this video. So yeah, I just wanted to show this and let you know. Pickup lines very rarely work, and going up to random women in public and being super creepy will never work. It's bad. That's about it. See ya. This is an embarrassing thing to admit out loud, but I've recently found a great guilty pleasure that I've been consuming like junk food. It's those ridiculously cringe podcasts where a few dudes, pseudo-intellectuals, bring on a bunch of women and have the worst debates of all time. It's a forsaken wasteland where normal thinking goes to die. A thunderdome of delusion. It is brain melting. It reminds me of those old PSAs for the dangers of smoking cigarettes and they'll like open up someone's chest and be like, this is what your lungs look like when you smoke. And it's like yellow and oozing covered in this like disgusting slime and it's very yucky. This is like that but instead of showing you your lungs on cigarettes, it's your brain when watching this content and it's revolting. Like, it is actual brain rot. And I can't look away. And goes into a marriage and has kids when they're like 18, 19, 20. And then um, a year into the relationship, it gets really, really abusive. From who? Would you, from both. This is so if rare. Anyone, it's anyone so really. Rare. Go, on. It happens. go on, go on, go on. My point is, I'm just, yeah. Even though it might be rare from what you guys think. It is. Uh, I already just find this painful. She's asking a very simple question and setting it up talking about abuse. And already the, the dudes here are like, this is ridiculous. This is exceptionally rare. This is damn near science fiction. Abuse? Never even heard of it. That's like winning the lottery twice level of astronomical odds. Abuse is, <laughs> it is very uncommon, very rare. As a way of trying to like kind of shut it down already, like... Uh, you're choosing something very fringe and outlandish. Abuses. It's like a unicorn. It almost doesn't exist. But anyway, crazy lady, go on with your hypothetical abuse thing or, or whatever you called it. It's just trying to downplay it, which I think is just cringe. If it would happen, what would you recommend for those people to do? Would they divorce or do you want them to keep going in the relationship? Keep going. You can't divorce. I mean, that's not a real thing. Uh, you can like separate. See, his Catholic background shines through. He yeah, knows. That. <laughs> you can't divorce. For real you, can, you can separate, but you can't actually divorce. That's not a real thing. Even though it might be like physically yeah, abusive. You got to endure. People are too. You want to stick in the relationship? People are just. I mean, look, people I'm, nowadays I'm be are just. 
Everybody quits. Everybody gives up. It's too hard. I'm this XYZ. This is why I'm special so I can fuck up this entire situation based upon me being special. The clown puts himself front and center here. You're looking at the chief entertainment for this episode. Discount Walmart brand Sal from Impractical Jokers here. His name's Jonathan, and let me just tell you, he's got some opinions, and man oh man, are they a stinker. <laughs> so, the question is very simple. If there's an abusive relationship, an abusive marriage, should the marriage end? You know, if the woman is being abused, or even if the man is being abused. The woman who asked the question, her name is Melina, and she doesn't just make it exclusive to women getting abused. Men can also be victims of abuse, something that uh, Jonathan heavily disagrees with. We'll get to that later on. But... He is saying that, oh, if it's an abusive relationship, you have to endure. This is the problem with snowflake society now. Everyone's such a... So they'll ruin a marriage because they think they're so special. You absolute troglodyte. Uh, <laughs> it's not about being special. It's about not getting beat the up in a marriage. There's, there's no excuse for abusing your spouse, whether it's physical or mental. Like, it's the most... There is a right answer to this question. And the answer is yes, the marriage should end if it's abusive. A hundred percent. Whether it's the woman or the man being abused, it should straight up end. There's no enduring. It, this isn't one of those situations where it's like, ah, you know, there's greener pastures once you get through a couple of the black eyes and broken bones. You know, my husband may have beat the f*** out of me a couple nights ago, but he also took me to a really fancy steakhouse and I had an absolute banging filet. So, you know, all of the abuse was worth it and I'm, I'm a little happier today. But it, it's, it's ridiculous. This is honestly making me concerned. My heart is breaking for whatever woman he's in a relationship with. I'm imagining this guy treating relationships like it's Fight Club. Eh, if my partner can't roll with my knuckle sandwiches without crying about it and she wants to leave for it, well then good riddance to her toots. Jesus Christ, special snowflakes can't handle a few of my right hooks. <laughs> Ridiculous. That's frightening. That is a frightening mentality. That you're telling someone to just endure physical or even mental abuse in a relationship and calling them like, sp like a special snowflake or a if they, they don't? That's crazy. And also his cohort there, the goofball he's in cahoots with, who's like, man, divorce isn't real. Divorce is make-believe. It's, it's hocus-pocus. There's no such thing as divorce. Yes, if you're getting abused, you can't divorce, obviously. It's, this, is, this is a wild episode. And the reality is people just haven't learned to f endure. There have been hard times in relationship. I'm sure you guys have had hard times in relationship. Any relationship has hard times, okay. and it is what it is. You need to push through, and you need to endure because we're in this. Abused? Hold on, because what we're in this situation now, like where everybody's just creating this like super nuanced, like one percent example of like, well, what if the kids transgender black and abused and he's a black lives matter supporter like cool okay yeah. <laughs> i get like that one minute no, but I'm situation for anyone that might be in that situation what would you recommend okay i'll tell you what 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 i will tell you what i would do a lot of diarrhea fell out of his mouth on this one here so there's there's a lot to break down he had a like an actual episode of psychosis there he just started spitting shit that never even came up it's a very simple question it really wasn't nuanced. She just said, in an abusive relationship, should the marriage end? It really doesn't get more simple than that. A child could understand the question. There, there wasn't anything about, like, all these nuance that you bring up. But anyway, Smash Mouth has his meltdown there for a second, but his message is still the same. No matter what, you gotta endure. <laughs> you gotta endure the abuse. He even has the chutzpah to equate abuse to just a hard time in a relationship. As if it's just some little obstacle, little hiccup that every relationship goes through. Brother, abuse is not a hard time in a relationship. That is a crime. That is when a relationship ends, should end. I wouldn't want my daughter in that situation, mm -hmm. quite frankly. And yeah. I understand the argument to endure because I have people close to me who grew up in abusive households and it lasted for periods of time and it was a phase and they endured through it and they ended up raising healthy, successful families. Their faces really tell the whole story here. This, this reaction's pretty on par with that statement. Abuse is not a phase. It shouldn't be a phase. This isn't a normal thing. There's, there's no reason to start normalizing abusive relationships as something every couple needs to go through or will go through. Abuse isn't acceptable. Full stop. Like, that's, that's where, this was a really easy slam dunk for these dudes to answer. Should a marriage end when it gets abusive, whether for the woman or the man? 
And the answer is easy. It's yes. A relationship isn't something where there should be an abusive phase. If there is an abusive partner, that partner needs to seek legitimate help and get help for controlling whatever violent urges or impulses they have. But that doesn't mean that the other partner needs to stay in the relationship while they're getting that help. Especially not if there's children in the household, because not only is it dangerous for the partner, it's dangerous for the kid to be around as well. It, I think it's very simple, I don't think it's that nuanced. Abuse just isn't acceptable. Like, it, it, that's a, a super easy thing for a normal person to answer, but we've cultivated this culture online where everything needs to be like a debate even on the simplest topics. Like, you just saw Smash Mouth have that meltdown, like, oh, you're getting into all this crazy 0.1% example nuance of abuse and then all of these other factors, like, out of nowhere. When that wasn't even what was discussed. It is the easiest black and white question. To an extent. I so mean, you they the would say that families. to stick in those relationships that might be abusive to everyone involved and a child, if there's a I'm child. I'm not saying like, hey, That's stick in the extreme. relationship and get the shit beat yeah. out of you by your husband. I think you guys... I'm just asking you what you believe. I'm, I'm just telling you... I, thing. I, I, even I'm if not it's a small extreme thing, I'm just asking you what you think if you should stick in that relationship or not. It's 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 such It is such an extreme example that I can't give a prescription for what other people should do there is there is an element god damn it it's not even an extreme example if you just google it for like 15 seconds there's so many different studies conducted on the topic and according to a lot of the different numbers all of which are a little different but most of them agree that at least 20 percent of all marriages are abusive at some point in time and that's just in reported cases like it's not an extreme example it's really not but even if it was it doesn't even change the question like even in the extreme example here it's still a very easy answer that yes that marriage should end there is a problem now this guy here is trying to play nice with everybody so he's like oh yes even this goober over here talking about endure i mean there's almost an element of something salvageable of his point when there's not like there's no excuse like you shouldn't be enduring abuse like under any circumstance, but he's really trying to give an olive branch over there for some reason. But this guy is at least admitting like he wouldn't want his daughter in that. So he does outright say like, yes, a woman shouldn't be getting the shit beat out of her in a, in a, in a marriage or relationship and she should leave. He at least will concede that, whereas the other two guys still for some reason fight tooth and nail that, nah, there's really no reason to be leaving. Like that. Do you have opinions about third trimester abortion? It's yes. terrible. Listen, it, it's okay, terrible. Okay, look at how quickly you can do it. Do you know how rare third trimester abortions are? They're also really they rare, are. but you immediately had a visceral reaction to that, yeah. right? There are households where parents are abusive to children. Like, that's not like an unfathomable thing. But for you to have that immediate visceral reaction to a type of abortion, that's so incredibly rare. But yeah, then when but it's I like, I mean, we're well, talking about like a guy like getting drunk and like, you know, beating, it, be beating his drunk, wife occasionally even... versus like. I actually think that was a really good point from Destiny there. Like, you have a very quick reaction to another extreme example. Why do you not have that same energy when it comes to abusive households? And then the guy starts making some shit up like, ah, we're talking about a guy getting drunk and maybe putting his hands on his wife. Where is that coming from? The question was so simple. They're making up like a whole fanfic plot line in their head about what was asked when it was really super simple. Abusive household, should the marriage end? Like, I actually wonder if she had even just said something even more simple and broad, what the response would have been. If she had asked, do you guys think abuse is bad? I wonder what they would have said. I wager that they would have been like, okay, we need to define what abuse is because all of these special snowflakes have weird definitions for abuse. So let's start really getting into the nitty gritty of what is abuse? Even though it's so easy, abuse is just bad. And an abusive relationship is bad. <laughs> I don't know what's so hard about it. I don't know what's so hard about them just admitting that. But well, okay, so 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 yeah. let, let me ask you guys: In the Catholic Church, I know that there's like annulments for marriages and stuff. Are there that no? That was a mistake. Are there no exceptions for like if a guy is beating his wife constantly? No, there are, but now or a uh, woman could as well, right? Well, hold on, hold on. Well, there's yeah. also yes, a distinction could, drawn between if a, a woman's beating a dude. Hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. Oh man, blubbery ass Jonathan there just got saved big time by the guy in the middle. He wanted so badly to say that if a man's getting beat by his girl then he's a or he's like a weak bitch or something. He wanted so badly to try and get that kind of bravado out there. Sad to see that this mentality still exists somehow, that men can't be the victims of abuse. I thought we got rid of that stigma years ago. Jonathan's supposed to be a men's self-help guru? How? Actually, how? Divorces that are initiated by women, Brian? 
78. 80%. 78. Yeah. 80%. 80%. And what percentage of those women have college degrees? Well, it jumps to 90% if they're college educated. Yeah. Yeah. Real. Brian, please present the stats to the class. What percentage of divorces are initiated by women? 80%? Thank you, Poindexter. That's sickening. 90% if they're college educated? I rest my case. That's why I only marry 18-year-olds now. They're too young to have a college degree, thus they can't divorce me. What does this have to do with anything? Okay, so you don't want to marry college-educated women? You want to marry dumb women? Like, I don't know. What You, you want to just marry a lobotomite stall? Cool, like, who cares? It doesn't matter. This has nothing to do with the core question anymore. It's gone fully off the rails and unhinged. They're so focused on picking apart divorce itself. So now they're spouting these stats and making each other mad. So one of the dudes is like, real. And then the other guy is taking a huge deep breath. <sniffs> Why I oughta just hearing that number's making me mad enough to put hands on my spouse because she might have considered a divorce at some point. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. This has nothing to do with what was asked. They are extreme. Well, I, agree, another, I agree with that. I want to ask but, one okay. more scenario, okay? Please. Oh, what Jesus. about if... Uh, I was giggling so hard because you can hear, I'm pretty sure it's Jonathan, go, oh, Jesus. When she says she wants to ask another scenario, why are you even here? The whole point is to communicate with the women, your guests, right? To ask them stupid questions and shit. Like, if, if you're so bothered with them talking, what the f*** are you even doing there? Two people Sorry. get married, Sorry, they have a kid, and then the wife starts cheating. Do you think they should divorce? Absolutely. They should yeah. divorce then? <laughs> Jesus himself you said. You don't think it wasn't adultery? And you could like said, work things through, right? Jesus himself said in, in cases of adultery, divorce is So you think the divorce is worse than physical abuse? No. For the children? For cheating, sorry. You think that cheating is worse than physical abuse? abuse. For the sorry. children, yes. I actually let out a full belly laugh. So she brings up cheating and, uh, and unanimously like, yes, obviously you have to divorce when, when the woman's being a whore. Well, if you've got a slut for a wife, you gotta divorce that harlot, that harpy, duh, are you stupid, lady? Absolutely, you have to divorce there. After they spent like six minutes about, well, actually, divorce is one of the most evil things that can ever happen. Divorce is unacceptable. Physical abuse, okay, abuse, you have to endure, because you can't divorce. But then when it's cheating, it's like, yeah, you gotta divorce. Jonathan even says crucifixion is warranted. I'm sure he's just being exaggeratory, but he does point blank say that cheating is worse than abuse for the kids. Which is a wild take. Both are awful. Uh, your father beating your mother or your mother beating your father in front of your kid is just as damaging as one of them being unfaithful. They're, these are both horrible things, both of which should end in divorce. But for some reason, they seem to only have a real visceral response when it comes to cheating. And then the guy in the middle even gets immediately religious, like, well, in the Bible, in the Bible it says, you know, when, when cheating's on the table, that's when divorce is absolutely necessary. Well, what the f the Bible also doesn't preach for beating the f out of your spouse either. I I'm sure you can also divorce in a case like that, so why didn't we get biblical when abuse was brought up? Why did we start trying to justify different levels of abuse and it might be a phase where it's going to get better after and this and that? Dude even wove a whole fanfic about like, yeah, we're talking about a man who gets drunk and maybe occasionally hits his wife. Like, what the f like, why are you making excuses for abuse and not for cheating all of a sudden, right? Like, and Melina even calls that out. She's like, oh, well, what about like working through it or, you know, maybe the cheating's a phase and like, no, 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 absolutely not. Cheating is the end all be all. This is crazy. Like, I was absolutely howling with laughter when we got to this segment in the podcast. Absolutely I, th I think, not. I think, Wait, I'm not okay, going to no. say this divorce? is worse. Divorce is worse for the children. I already said, I already said that if, if cheating, a woman's yeah. getting abused, yeah, I think she should leave. Like, yeah. I mean, if it's a, if it's a, a brief temporary thing, like. What if it's mental abuse? Okay, now it's less cut and dry. If it's, if it's you're getting your right. child up. I think there's a small chance that Jonathan may have misunderstood the question. He may have thought he heard, is divorce worse than abuse? And that's what he was saying, that divorce is worse than abuse for the kids. Which is still a stupid take, so I'm going to tackle that one as well. What the f man? You think that somehow kids witnessing their parents beating the shit out of each other is somehow less damaging than if they had just gotten divorced? You've got some issues you need to work through. My goodness. And then also that lady that's behind them is saying that it's less cut and dry when it comes to mental abuse. Why? Abuse is abuse. What, what are you talking about? So far up until this point in the episode, she hasn't said too much. She mainly just kind of agrees with everything the guys say. But she says it's less cut and dry when it comes to mental abuse, which leads me to believe that she thinks it should be cut and dry when it comes to divorce for physical abuse. But she didn't say anything. She didn't chime up and say like, hey, I agree. 
the marriage should end then. She just stayed silent because I guess she was just looking for things to fight them on as opposed to agree with. Which I think is always such a weird component of these debates where if you agree with your opponent, you're apparently losing. Or you lose points by doing so. Which is so backwards and that's why I think debates in general are kind of worthless because it's never about changing someone's mind. It's always about just cementing your own beliefs and never faltering and never changing perspective on anything. So nothing good ever really comes from it except for just general entertainment as a spectator. And this one had me giggling. So I wanted to talk about it a little bit. That's it. See ya. Today I watched a video that was physically painful for me to sit through, which is pretty uncharacteristic because I'm not really the kind of guy to cringe at anything or find it hard to finish a video. I've never failed a try not to cringe challenge or anything like that. I'm the kind of guy that could watch two girls one cup while eating chocolate ice cream and not feel a thing. But I saw a video today that was just hard for me to watch because it reminded me so much of me. A while ago I made this video telling an embarrassing story from my life where I hyped myself up in the mirror for days leading up to this climax where I would go to GameStop and tell the girl that worked there she was beautiful and then I finally did it, I panicked and ran away from her, just sprinted out of there as if the building was on fire. It was basically a ding-dong ditch with a creepy compliment attached to it. To this day, I'm still shocked she didn't report me to authorities, just call the police as I was running away. I wouldn't have been surprised to see a police sketch of my face posted on all the, the wanted posters or something looking for the creepy GameStop guy. But anyway, this is relevant because the video I want to share with you today, it's a video of a guy who did almost exactly what I did, but without running away. And my god, it's bad. It proved to me that I made the right call sprinting out of there that day, because it could have been much worse. It could have been as bad as what you're about to see here. It, it's very clear that under no circumstances does this ever really work, because real life is just not like anime. What? Are you in high school? No. Graduated? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're in college? Mm-hmm. All right. Kent. Yeah, it's about 40 minutes. This guy is smooth. The small talk is going well. You can see that she's really engaged in the conversation and enjoying every second of it. This is, a, I think, what the, the pickup artist community calls the Shogun method. It's like a forbidden jutsu because it's deemed too powerful. It makes women just want you all the time and you drown in sodden panties. So the Shogun method is just outlawed in most countries for being just too strong. But this guy... He's breaking all the rules. He's busting out the Shogun method right here, right now, and you can really see just how effective it is. Nineteen. I think you got it. Yep. What city is Kent? Kent. I really do wonder how long he'd been here trying to flirt like this for because she stopped and started the recording multiple times and he was still going. She also started this video like in the middle of a conversation that he was trying to start. So I have to imagine it'd been like 10 minutes of him just unsuccessfully diarying out bad small talk. Like, I don't know why he'd continue when it's very clear she's not interested. She's giving one word answers. Yeah. No. Kent. And he's like, yes, nice, jackpot, bang. There's a city called Kent in the college called Kent. Mm -hmm. Is that like East Cleveland? No, it's Kent, Ohio. <laughs> so it's not even part of Cleveland? No. It's part of Northeast Ohio? I guess. I'm gonna take this. Okay. Mine. My country. My man's been stunlocked by Kent. He's on like a whole side quest with the, the Kent lore here, and it's it's not it's not really doing him any favors. And then he gets a little quirky and takes money out of their tip jar, I guess. I, I don't really know what that is about, but you know, all power to him. You know, if I can't get this girl's number, I might as well take the, the money from the tips over here. So that she'll remember me then as a bad boy. 321. Oh shit, it's on here. Is both these mine? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you, yeah. You wanna know my thing? Mm, I'm good. 
Damn. Shucks, I can't believe that one didn't work. Uh, you know, they say chivalry's dead, but come on, this guy's doing his best, offering to give away his pin number to her. I mean, that's sweet. There is no doubt in my mind this guy doesn't give a f about stickers. He came in here because he must have seen her when he was walking by. I think this is a hot topic. I'm not sure. And he's like, oh my god, I I've got to go in and at least try. So he just sat there for a little bit. And he's like, I can do this. I can do this. He, he went in there, panicked, and grabbed a handful of Adventure Time stickers or something. He's like, oh my god, shit. I have to commit to this. Maybe that's what ruined his chances. She thought less of him because he was buying stickers. He should have just done the Always Sunny in Philadelphia method. Should have just went in there and just... Hey, where do you keep your magnum condoms for my magnum dong? Also, what's the deal with Kent? You know, it's, he really likes Kent, I guess, because he's treated this lady like she's the goddamn tour guide for Kent. So, I mean, I feel like there might have been a better play if he had only just grabbed a better item. Because there's no doubt in my mind he is not here actually shopping for stickers. He just happened to pick those up because he needed some excuse to be at the cash register. Do you want your receipt? Alright, you're all set. Where am I going? No? Are you sure about that? Do you have Instagram? No. You're too cool for Instagram? I don't like social media. Why not? Mm, perpetuate some bad vibes from people. <laughs> you're cute. Thanks. I didn't even know it was this possible to look so uninterested and uncomfortable in a social situation. She is like actually collapsing into herself from the cringe of this guy right now. It's it's unbearable even from an outside perspective. I can only imagine how awful it must have been to act to like literally be there. I bet other shoppers in the store, if there are any, also haven't forgotten this day if they overheard this conversation or saw this from a distance because my god. So this is when he finally drops the you're cute line, which in my case was beautiful. It, you know, mine was a little better, I'd say. And then he didn't run away. He sat there and just waited for a long time. He should have just ran away, honestly. Like, he should have taken a page out of my playbook for my embarrassing history of trying to talk to girls. Because it would have saved him at least a little bit more embarrassment. What that you said? No. You ever go to the beach? Not really. Or like Yuri? No. On a boat? It's not really a beach, is it? It's a lake. You can start to feel the desperation setting in as he knows that he needs to get out of the store quickly before security gets called. So he just starts talking about items he sees around the store like a game of I Spy. The uh, hacky sack. You like hacky sack? Uh, feet? Do you like feet? I am wearing shoes. Do you like my shoes? You know, you can really see that he's trying his best but knows that, you know, the clock's kind of running out here. It ends kind of in a bit of a cliffhanger because you can hear him sigh so you know he's still there. And I have to imagine that he probably just walked away after this because there's no follow-up or anything. So hopefully that's like the happy ending here. She didn't have to continue being bothered. And uh, hopefully he learns a valuable lesson. I know I did when I did something similar. So I can only pray that he also learned the same lesson. Just don't really bother people while they're trying to work. You're not the main character in the world. So stop acting like it. Uh, anyway, that's really about it. See ya.